happy Thursday. We really thank God for you and thank you for joining us in our today's episode of My Opinion. As we always tell you, it is always a pleasure hosting you every Thursday morning starting from 9 for this wonderful session of My Opinion. Indeed, we are glad that you have kept sharing with us your views and uh, every time we see you viewing, uh, we see you streaming live a time like now, we don't take it for granted. We say thank you so much and karibu sana to our today's episode. Thank you also for sharing this with your friends and with your relatives, with your brothers, with your sisters and with the people around you because the more we come together in sharing and in uh, edifying one another, the more we get strengthened and the more the body of Christ is edified. My name is Timothy Ndua and uh, welcome to our today's episode of My Opinion. Today is a great day that God has given us and as we continue with the program, I want to welcome you to uh, put in the comment section, you can share with us anything where you are viewing us from, uh, you can also share with us your opinion over the matter that we'll be discussing today. You can as well share with us an area in your life, and an area, a general area that you feel we can discuss and we can bring to you in our following episodes of My Opinion. We really thank God and um, we welcome you to our today's program. Today, we have a very interesting topic that we are discussing. We want to overcome what we call pride. So today we are considering or we are talking about overcoming pride. And uh, uh, some people don't really understand what pride is. Most people will think that when you change your lifestyle, you have become a proud man or a proud woman. If initially you didn't have a lot of money and God blesses you with money and you stop going to the joints you are going, you stop buying things from the places you used to buy, you stop uh, hanging out with some of the people you used to hang around with and you change your lifestyle, many people will term that one as pride and they will start telling you that you have become a proud man of late. People will think that such change of lifestyle is what is considered to be pride. But that is very incorrect and that is very inaccurate. Pride is not the change of lifestyle. Pride is not the change of how you have been doing things in the past. Instead, pride is when you take it upon yourself to feel like it is by your strength, it is by your power, it is by your effort that you have achieved the little or the much that you have achieved in your life. The moment you put God out of the picture, the moment you feel that you are married to your good husband because you are beautiful. Now that one is pride. The moment you feel that you have achieved a lot of wealth because you are a very hardworking man, that is now pride. The moment you feel like you have climbed up the ladder, you have been promoted at the place of your work because you are a very hardworking person because you're very diligent and because you deserve it, then that is pride. The moment you feel that you got that employment because you were the most qualified and you had the papers and you deserved it, that is now pride. The moment you keep God out of the equation and you feel like it was by your power, it is because you are eating healthy that you have continued not being sick in the hospital, then that is pride. When you feel like you are doing a lot of effort in your diet, and that is why you have maintained that good figure, that good shape, 
the moment you feel it's by going to the gym that you have that strength and it is by your effort that you are the way you are. That is the time you are proud and you are a proud man or a proud woman. We ought to overcome pride in our lives and we must know some three attributes of pride for us even before we go to the area of overcoming pride. Of course you can't win a battle with an enemy who you do not know. We must define pride properly. We must understand pride properly for us to be able to overcome it in our lives. And I want to let you know, my brother and my sister, that pride is very deceptive. That is one of the characteristic or the attribute of pride. It is very deceptive. Many people do not know that they are proud. Many people even fall and they have found themselves rising and then crumbling down and they do not know, they do not realize even now that they are down because they are proud or they have the spirit of pride in them. I once visited a friend of mine, Bishop uh, Joseph Matenge, who is my mentor and a personal friend. And I was facing some challenges in life. And when we sat down with him, and uh, of course he knows me very well, and I like those people who will look you direct in the face and rebuke you and challenge you and encourage you and teach you and correct you because he's such kind of a man to me. And when I sat at his office and we were sharing, I was passing through a very difficult time. I was almost depressed by then. And he looked at me and told me, Timothy, the problem with you is that you have pride in your life. And I was trying to imagine where I think I thought I was the most humble person in life. I thought that I was a very humble person, by the way. I looked at him and wondered, are you talking about pride? Um, me, Timothy, I am a proud person. And he explained to me what he meant. And we prayed and I chose to change. I did a number of things to overcome pride. And for real, today I look back and I see indeed pride had contributed to my downfall by then, to the point that I was almost getting depressed. And uh, I'm telling us that indeed many people will not know that they are proud. Many people will uh, think and will assume that they are leading normal lives. Many people will assume that they are humble, that they have nothing. Even if you tell them that they are proud, not many will accept that fact. And may God help me today even to let you understand that pride is very deceptive. And if you go to the book of uh, Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says that your pride has deceived you. And indeed, whenever you have pride, rarely will you come out to acknowledge it. I think one of the most unrepented sin is the sin of pride because many people will not appreciate that they indeed they are proud. Number two, you ought to know that pride is very destructive. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, the Bible tells us that pride comes before destruction. We always say that pride comes before fall or a fall. And indeed, anyone who find themselves leading proud lives, it is just a matter of time and automatically we await them down. Because that is a fact of life. Pride will always come before a fall. The moment you think that it was by your power that you were able to achieve one, two, or three things in your life. The moment you start praising yourself or praising the people around you, the moment you take God away from the equation, that is like going backwards 
uh, in a reverse gear and you're not using the side mirrors, you're not using uh, anything, you're not even looking backward, but you are just uh, pressing the, uh, the, the accelerator and you have engaged a uh, reverse gear and you're just comfortable there singing songs. Uh, the crash that you fall into, many people will come to see and witness. That is what happens when there is pride in your life. The moment you start thinking that it is by my strength that I'm the way I am, friends, that is the moment you engage a reverse gear and slowly by slowly you start accelerating and you find yourself collapsing in a very great manner. The third thing we ought to know about pride is that pride always brings shame. And if you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 2, the Bible says that when pride comes, then comes shame. But with the love roly is wisdom. So these two things are neighbors, pride and shame. These two are neighbors. And the bad thing, you may not know that you are proud, but people will always know. People will always uh, see, hear you talk, and they will start telling themselves, you know, that person is a very proud man. And you may not know yourself. And it's like uh, walking blindly to somewhere there is a pit. You have not seen the pit, but somebody else have been there and they are aware that there is a pit. And you go on singing and you are happy and then you fall into the pit. And everybody was like, we are not surprised. You know, the moment we saw you walking that direction, we knew what will come of it. People are never surprised when proud people collapse, when their wealth comes crumbling down, when their possessions are taken away from them. People rarely get surprised because they see you proud. They see and they understand the outcome of it. And it is such a shameful thing when you try to get back to the friends who you blocked in your mobile uh, phone. Those people who you have not been picking their calls. The moment you try to look for them, it is such a painful and a shameful experience. And so another attribute of pride is that it will always be neighboring. They follow one another. Pride and shame, they follow one another. Now you understand the animal we are talking about. You now understand what pride is. And we have said that pride is very deceptive. Pride is very destructive. And pride is uh, normally followed by shame. But now, friends and brothers and sisters, how do we therefore overcome pride in our lives? And I'll give you three or four steps to overcome pride. And step number one, we ought to adopt the correct view of God. That is the first thing that we ought to do. Adopt the correct view of God. You know, we are not in competition with God. He is the creator. We are just but a creation. We must appreciate that everything that we have, the good husband, the good wife, the good health, the good job, the good business, the fat bank account. And you know, everything, the land, the plots that we have, each and everything that we have, we must know that we are just but caretakers. We are just but stewards. God owns everything. We are but his caretakers. He has given us as stewards. We are taking care of that which belongs to God. We must always appreciate that. If we have that positive attitude, and we all know that attitude is everything. If we have the right attitude towards issues, then we understand them the right way. And God desires that we always understand that we belong to God, our children belong to God, everything that we have belongs to God, for us, we are just to take care of that which belongs to God. 
If God has given me good children, I'm just a caretaker of the children who belongs to God. If God has given me some good health, I will not eat in hurry. I'll try to do the best I can to take care of that which God has given me. If God has given me a good job, I'll be faithful at the place of my work because I want to please God in whatever I do at the place of my work. Whatever you do, have the right view of life. Let God take his rightful position in your life. Know that he, it is by his power that you have achieved whatever you have achieved. Yes, I know you did that interview and it was very tough before you got that job, but realize that it is God who gave you that job. I know you spent a lot of money in hospital, but know very well that it is God who gave you that particular opportunity to have that good health. The second step towards overcoming pride is that we must revise your first, your first beliefs, or we must revise our first beliefs. What beliefs are we talking about? I've just said that notion that I'm doing well because I've been able to do one, two, three. The other people are doing badly because they, are, they have not done what I've been able to do. Those are false beliefs. The moment you feel like you are not suffering from those other diseases because you are leading a good diet life, you know, that's a false belief. The moment you think that you are married to your good husband, because you're beautiful or because you are able to, you know, you, to be at the right place at the right time. It was all about you. That is not the case. Mind you, there are many, many, many other more beautiful girls than yourself and they are yet married. There are so many learned people and they are not employed. There are so many people who have a lot of money but they have been unable to have a business empire. There are so many people who have been able to have less of what you are having and yet they have been putting in their lives a lot of effort. They are yet to achieve anything. It is not by your power. It is not by your might. It is by the help of God himself. And so you ought to have the right attitude, change the beliefs that you are having. Step number three, brothers and sisters, you need to repent the sin of pride. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, 8 and 9, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we repent our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us. So just like any other sin, appreciate that you have been proud in your life. Sometimes you may not know it, but go before God in prayer and seek forgiveness from the sin of pride. And for each and every one of us who is following, I would wish that during your time of prayer, tell God to forgive you anywhere you have been proud knowingly or unknowingly. And we have seen that pride is one of those sins that hide, hides itself and rarely do we find ourselves exposing it and repenting it and changing or switching from it. And finally, my friends, we ought to avoid the temptation of being proud. How do we avoid the temptation? Now that we have repented and God has forgiven us, how do we therefore change our lives? And how do we avoid this great temptation of leading proud lives. It is simple. Live a life of humility. If you go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, the Bible says that humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God and he will exhort you in due time. Live a life of humility. Appreciate God in everything that you do. Remember James chapter 4. The Bible warns us about planning for tomorrow, that tomorrow I'll go to a certain city, do this and that, do business there. You know, and the Bible tells us that we ought always to say that if God helps us, if God 
will help me, I'll do this and that. Or if God wills, I'll do this and that. We ought to be humble always so that we may avoid the temptation of being proud. And so, friends, we can talk enough about pride. But one thing that, in my opinion, we ought to understand from our today's episode is that pride is very deceptive. And as we have shared, very few people will realize that they have been proud in their lives. Very few people will appreciate the sin of pride in their lives. Very few people will acknowledge that indeed they have been proud. I know that some of the people who are watching me, you could have failed in one way, and when you look back, you realize, Kube, I have been leading a proud life. There is the masses of God. And as we have said, we can repent and turn back to God. That is my opinion. And I always say that I base it with the scriptures because at least we all can agree that the scripture is God-breathed and it is profitable for us all. Today, I want to add it there. And I want to thank you that you have followed me to the end. It has been great pleasure to host you and to be with you in our today's program. I wish to hear your feedback, your comments on the topic that we have just shared. Put it in the comment section. Feel free to interact with us. Feel free to let us know where you always watch us from. Continue sharing this channel and these videos with your friends, and we will always appreciate when this message reach many and many and many more. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Timothy Ndua. I really thank God for you and pray that you may be blessed even as you have a powerful and a great and a prideless week ahead. May the blessings of the Lord follow you now and always. Thank you and God bless you.